from the hills, hills of, of Catalonia, Catalonia. Welcome, welcome to the, the GCN, GCN show. Welcome to the GCN show, brought to you by Wiggle. We'll keep this brief because there is so much in the show this week. Chris Froome. Yeah. Our own Emma and Chris are at the Maratona. John is in London at the launch of the Zwift Academy. We've got loads of new tech, including the brand new first ever aero road bike from Cannondale, the System 6. And we are doing more science, but this time we need your help. More on that coming up later on. Yeah, Dan, I'm pretty sure we're behind schedule already, mate. We are, and we haven't even said we've got another new presenter. This week in the world of cycling, we learned that Peter Sagan is marketing gold. We have never been excited about receiving a showerhead before, have we? Nope. But then again, we have never received a special edition hands grower Peter Sagan monogrammed showerhead. Oh yeah. Imagine, Dan, when Sagan, or if Sagan, wins Olympic gold. Golden shower? Yeah. Hmm. No, it wouldn't be for me, but I imagine there's some people out there that pay for one. Yeah. Some people pay for anything, won't they? Uh, we also learnt this week that the ASO weren't too happy about the prospect of reigning champion Chris Room mm. riding the Tour de France. Uh, they made an attempt on Sunday to block him from riding this year's event. They did, but then we also learned this week that Chris Room will be racing the Tour de France because the UCI have dropped their proceedings against him, clearing him to race because he's innocent. Yeah, now I'm sure we don't need to explain what this is all about, but if you happen to have been living under a rock for the last few months, this of course relates to the salbutamol case, whereby he returned an adverse analytical finding for the drug at last year's Vuelta a España. It's not a banned drug, although it is if you go over a certain limit. And Froome's sample was twice the legal limit. He posted 2,000 nanograms as opposed to just 1,000 nanograms. Now, that doesn't constitute a positive test, but nevertheless, it was a test that he had to explain. And boy, did he try and explain it. Apparently, Froome and his legal team submitted 1,500 pages to the UCI on the 4th of June. And so fair play to the UCI. They've actually moved quite quickly on this, I think. Just under one month later, they and the World Anti-Doping Agency have concluded that Froome did not post an adverse analytical finding. So that's that. Effectively, Froome has been cleared and he is now free to race, as he has been in fact, up through to this decision. Uh, he will therefore line up on Saturday because ASO have got no reason to block him from the Tour de France in an attempt to win his fifth Tour de France and his fourth Grand Tour in a row. Yeah, but despite a line firmly being drawn on this case, I suspect things are going to rumble on and on, aren't they? Particularly because actually right now, as we film this, there is a frustrating lack of detail from the UCI as to just what in those 1500 pages prompted them to say that Froome had done nothing wrong. Yeah, it would be interesting to see, wouldn't it? Because yep. logic does suggest that given the precedence of people like Alessandro Pataki and Diego Ulissi, who posted salbutamol levels above the limit but less than Froome's, they were served bans. And so logic does suggest that Froome was almost inevitably gonna get a ban. Well, yeah, a lot of people were saying that, weren't they, over the past few months, but what we didn't know and what we still don't know is how many other riders, how many other athletes have been in Froome's situation and been exonerated, but we'd never know about it because in Froome's case, or well, the only reason we know about Froome's case was that it was leaked. It should have been a process that was conducted behind closed doors. That was the correct and fair way of doing it. So how many others have mm. been? Have well, been? we have heard rumours, so si, haven't we? Oh, we have. uh, that rumour is that the Froome mm. lawyers did, through their investigations during this, find upward of 10 other athletes who went through something very similar to Chris Froome, except for the case that it wasn't done with the public eye because it was done behind closed doors. Yeah, now we stress that this is very much a rumor. We cannot confirm nor deny it, but wouldn't it be interesting? To know. Yeah. I mean, we will inevitably find out more details, I'm sure, as time goes on. But in the meantime, we want to know your thoughts about this, because I'm sure for many, you're going to be breathing a sigh of relief. For others, I should imagine probably outright anger. So make sure you get involved in the comments section. Keep it civil. After all, we're all cycling fans at the end of the day. But also, why not take part in the poll just up there? Are you happy with the decision or are you sad? Hmm. Be interested to hear your thoughts. Pleased, angry. As mentioned at the top of the show, GCN is about to do some more science, but this time we need your help. We do. We are investigating whether or not cycling is actually bad for your sexual health. Now, there is a lot of research out there already, but most of it's total rubbish. Bollocks. Well, that is actually a good point, yeah, because clearly 
the issues here are going to be distinctly different between men and women. So in this first instance, we are going to be asking the male part of our audience to take part in the questionnaire. We will have a documentary on this subject coming up in a few weeks, and we're going to tackle three problem areas. So penile numbness, erectile dysfunction and prostate related problems. So what specifically are the issues? What should you be concerned about? What should you seek help with? And indeed, is there anything that's less important? Mm. So this is where you lot come in, because to the best of our knowledge, no one has ever really surveyed a large group of genuine cyclists like you lot out there. Uh, how much do you actually ride your bikes and have you ever had these issues or do you continue to have the issues that Sai's just mentioned? And is there a correlation between those two points? Yeah, I mean, it's such an important subject, isn't it? Because irrespective of the outcome of the survey, people do have problems in this department. And equally, men typically I mean, we're just a bit crap, aren't we, at confronting our health-related issues. So crap, in fact, that that's one of the reasons why we live less long than women. That's apparently one of the reasons we've been Is it really? Apparently so, yeah. Well, I didn't know that. Yeah. All right, so please do get involved in the questionnaire. Uh, to do it, all you've got to do is follow the link in the description below this video. All the data that we receive will be completely anonymised, so yeah. don't worry about that. Uh, and if nothing else, you'll be helping us to do some proper science. That's right. Well. You say us, we've got a proper scientist oh, yeah. in this one. Yeah, so actually uh, a top urologist, a top surgeon, who is a super keen cyclist and also an Ironman, but don't hold that against him. Now, if you need any extra incentive to get involved beyond the fact that you might well be helping out some fellow cyclists, then our friends over at Physique have kindly offered to give away four of their saddles uh, to people that take this survey uh, who will be chosen at random. Yeah, and it's a subject close to their hearts, you would have thought, wouldn't it? Mm. Although, we stress that there are no commercial ties in this whatsoever. No, none at all. Uh, so please get involved in the link in the description below this video. And then we'll repeat this process a little bit further down the line uh, for our female audience. Yeah, indeed. Uh, make sure you share the survey out as well to your mates. It's now time for Cycling Shorts. Cycling Shorts now, and let us take the opportunity to remind you that we've launched a new channel, GCN en Espanol. Same Cycling Shorts, different language. Muy pronto, GCN en español. Y ahora vamos a aumentar el ritmo. Os contaremos todo lo que hay que saber sobre nuestro gran deporte. De ciclismo. Your feedback on this has been absolutely brilliant so far, so thank you all for that, and also for your help in getting the word out there uh, to the Spanish speakers of this world. If you haven't already shared it with your Spanish speaking friends, uh, please do so. Yeah, and some Brilliant comments, overwhelmingly positive. Uh, this one though, Dan, uh, did jump out for me, uh, from Alexander R. He says, uh, Oscar looks great, and there's no arguing that. I mean, he does look great, doesn't he? And actually, that reminds me of another comment that points out that Oscar now has the best hair on GCN. I did see that. Hard uh, to argue, to be fair. Well, yeah. Yeah, I'm glad you said that, Dan, because, uh, yeah, I mean... Anyway, moving swiftly on, Alexander R. Then also goes on to say, why do we need the same videos, but in a different language? Tough one to answer that, isn't it? But mm -hmm. we've broken it down. The reason is for people that like cycling, that speak Spanish and don't speak any English. It's for them. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I suppose that makes sense when you put it like that. Yeah, we should also stress that we're not just making exactly the same videos in Spanish, we're making fresh uh, new videos of Oscar and any other presenters that we get on. Uh, so if you haven't already subscribed, you're a Spanish speaker, you can subscribe now by clicking on the globe that's on the screen. Yeah, and let's say, Dan, that the announcements do not stop there, do they? Don't. We've got another one. Please, would you welcome Ollie Bridgewood? Welcome, Ollie Bridgewood. The addition of Ollie to our team bolsters the presenting lineup even further. Uh, we are clearly on a mission when it comes to creating great cycling videos, and that momentum is gathering pace. Uh, Ollie will, amongst other things, be creating some in depth features, but brings with him a wealth of experience, and along with that, some pretty impressive scientific credentials. That's right, it does seem like you lot are, have been enjoying watching Emma do proper science, uh, basically, so much that we've actually had to recruit another proper scientist. So with Ollie, we've now got our second PhD on the team. Yeah. Thanks, guys. I can't wait to get stuck in, especially seeing as uh, this week, we're going to be going to Spain for that Ollie. big presenter challenge. Shh, shh, shh. Just uh, <coughs> keep that one at the oh, right. I didn't, I didn't yeah. let it as a Thanks. secret. That's, that's, uh, that's right. Then after that, at the weekend, it's 
Eurobike. Yeah. It's the biggest tech bonanza going. That's right, yeah. Ollie and I are heading out to Germany for that one, so uh, I can't wait. There's going to be some gems. I can feel it now. Yeah, really looking forward to that. And then we're going to be comparing uh, a superbike versus a hyperbike. Apparently hyperbikes do exist, so I can't oh, yeah. wait for that. And I'm also going to be doing an Everesting ch a challenge, an Everesting attempt as well. You are, yeah, that was just the very start, really, wasn't it, of the ideas that we had that we didn't really want to do ourselves. <laughs> Welcome along, Ollie. Yeah, that's right, Thanks. you've definitely got your work cut out, Ollie, but yeah, great to have you aboard. Hey, thinking of uh, cutting work out, actually, uh, Emma and Chris have been out in Italy riding the Maratona, yeah. and I believe they've got something for us. Cheers, guys. Welcome back to Alta Badia, where we've just finished the Maratona. Feeling a little bit tired, I think, but. Very happy after a beautiful day cycling in the sunshine. Uh, yeah, it was sunshine. It all was day. sunny all day. In fact, I think I might have toasted my forehead. <laughs> never mind. It was really fun. The mountains were beautiful. The people were lovely. Yeah, good food, good drink. Oh, the Linzer torta was so good that I ate too much and felt sick. And the best bit was the descents. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I took them a little bit more cautiously. Than Chris, I think yeah, I unfortunately, say. you didn't take the climbs that cautiously, Emma. I did. They were lovely. I was mm. just gently rolling up. There was no gentle about it. We had some great chatting. Before. We met some nice people. <laughs> we also saw Big Mig, Miguel did, India. Yeah, he, he gave me a cheer on one climb. Eddie Merckx. Yep, he was not riding. No. We saw Elio Viviani, who had incredibly raced and won the Italian National Championships yesterday. Got here at midnight and, uh, yeah, and then got up at five to, to ride. And um, you can actually uh, you can watch a little interview with him at the start line. What a way to celebrate. Yeah, I don't have the jersey yet. They don't do tonight, but uh, it's my yeah, first official. Uh, I don't know compares. Yeah, races uh, uh, with the national championship. I uh, arrived here yesterday night, midnight thirty. So you know, this morning the wake up is five uh, ten, five fifteen. That's quite late. I got up at four thirty. Uh, yeah, I'm lucky. So <laughs> I do some little bit of breakfast and then I'm here. But I do just the short one. Huh? Oh, okay. Just four climbs. Did we see anyone else out there today? Oh yeah, we did. We saw a couple of sky riders, although not actual pro riders oh. on the team. I think it was Brailsford and uh, one of their directors, Sportifs. Yeah, they were trying pretty hard. They were quiet on the climb where I passed them. Uh, maybe they were breathing deeply, or maybe their minds were elsewhere with this current Froome case. I mean, maybe, to be honest, I'm a bit surprised they had time to just go I and ride a Sportif. I reckon they were just focused on the ride. That's it was a tough one. It, yeah, yeah. It was a, it was a tough climb, though. That's where I felt yeah. sick. That's all right, didn't it? It's yeah. nice over there. Yeah, yeah. 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 So stay tuned because a full video on their exploits is going to be coming out soon. But uh, now we're going to see what John Cannings is up to over at the uh, Zwift Academy launch. Thanks guys, yep that's right, I'm here in London and for once it's not absolutely chucking it down with rain, although it is a little bit windy. However, why am I here? Well I'm here for the launch of this year's Swift Academy where riders get to train and race from the comfort or kind of comfort of their own home on a home trainer with a chance of becoming a professional bike rider. Now some of you will remember Lloydie last year, he visited the Team Dimension Data training camp where he announced the winner of that place. And yep, Ollie, the winner last year is here, as well as Leah, who was the inaugural winner of the Women's Zwift Academy. And details of how you can join the Zwift Academy trial process are in the description beneath. Now I'm gonna go and find out how those riders have got on with becoming a professional cyclist. So I'm here with the inaugural winner of the Zwift Academy, Leah Thorvalson. Now Leah, do you have any tips for potential candidates going forward if they want to become pro? As far as the tips for the Zwift Academy, yeah. I would say um, enjoy the process, get to know the Zwift community, um, just put your personality out there. When I say that, I don't mean to be somebody or not, but just everybody has their own qualities on and off the bike, so get to know the people and really enjoy it. I'm here with the winner of last year's Zwift Academy, Ollie Jones. Well, and a belated congratulations. How's the season been for you? Yeah, the season's been great. I mean, like moving into moving into the new house in Luca, moving away from the family back in New Zealand it was a it was a big step for me. But I've had a had a couple of had a couple of crashes and little injuries here and there this season. But uh, it's all part of racing, and uh, on the whole, I've had a really good time. And we're about halfway through the season at the moment, and uh, I'm feeling really good to uh, give the second half of the season a really good shot. We shall finish Cycling Shorts by sending our best wishes to the German track star Christina Vogel who crashed 
really badly in training and reportedly suffered spinal injuries. Mm. Uh, thankfully, although she is still in intensive care, she is now at least stable. But like you said, Star, that did uh, sound pretty nasty, what happened to her there. Uh, so GCN sends the best wishes and we hope you have the speediest recovery possible. Yeah. Yeah. Seconded. Well, thirded. Thirded, probably, yeah. <laughs> but I uh, don't know about you guys. I'm going to go now because I'm going to go fit a uh, 32 cassette on ready for the uh, hang. Yeah, 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 we'll keep that yeah. quiet, mate. Secret. All right, mate. See ya. If you can find an 1136 for me, I'll, I'll take it. You check my battery's charged. <laughs> GCN Wiggle of Fortune coming up for you right now. Your chance to win one of four Wiggle vouchers to spend on anything you wish over on their online shop. Uh, prize four, £25, price three fifty. price two is £75. And the big one, which was won last week, so whilst you were absent, £150 for prize one. I thought the big one was the beer. Well, it is, yeah. I the mean, one chance Dan gets to win a beer each week. Yes. Right, who do we have as our contestant this week, Sir, It is Gavin Dempster. Right, so, right Gavin. Then. Yep. Good luck to you. Best of luck, Gavin. Uh, we are going to start in three, in two, in one, and we are off. Come then, Wheel of Fortune. Can it land on prize one for two weeks on the trot, or could it be the second beer in three Ooh, weeks? Ooh, beer's been a god, that was close. Three, it's looking good two, though, isn't it? It's looking good. Is it going to go to... Oh! It is Yay! one! Again! 150 big ones! Oh man, what a bonus! <laughs> I was about to say, what are the chances of that? But I think as somebody did point out in a comment the other day, every week is exactly the same chance of getting uh, one of these prizes. So there you go, £150 winging its way to you, Greg. Make sure you let us know what you spend that money on over on the Wiggle online shop. You can get quite a lot over there for 150 quid. Crikey, yeah you can. Tech of the week now, and Orbea is very stealth, and Dan, I think you can attest to this, very effective e-bike has just been pimped out for summer 2018. It has indeed. It weighs in at just 11.31 kilograms, yeah. and it is called the Orbea Gain Carbon. And now this bike uh, has the motor in at the rear hub. That will provide an extra 250 watts of assistance when you need it, and at that 250 watts, uh, the battery allows it to last for up to an hour. And let's make this clear, this is not designed to be at the moped end of the spectrum when it comes to e-bikes, even if I might have made it look like one when I rode it. <laughs> did you really, Dan? I did. Uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, it's called Just Enough, and the idea is that it looks like a road bike, which it does, and it rides like a road bike, which I believe it does, but then it just gives you a little helping hand for when you need it. Yeah. Most of the time. Cracking. Absolutely loved it. <laughs> yeah. uh, being just 11.3 kilograms though, it's just kind of feel like the new frontier of e-bikes. Although, the more traditional and familiar style of e-bike is still moving forward at a quite rapid rate. Well, that's right, because BMC have just released a new one called the Alpen Challenge Amp Range. Now that is weightier, it's 14 kilos, but you get double the torque from the motor and double the capacity from the battery. So that very much is on the more e-bike end of the spectrum, not road bike with a helmet helping hand. Uh, and to be fair, the flat bars on there would probably attest to that intended mm. use. A bit of a giveaway. Yeah. Yes. Uh, also last week, we, or at least Cy here, was privileged to get a first look at the brand new Cannondale System 6 Aero road bike. Uh, the full video for that is over on the tech channel, but in the meantime, here is a quick sneak peek. Cy assures me it's incredibly fast, even without a motor. Hopefully, hopefully it looked quite fast. <laughs> It's called the System 6, and Cannondale fans might remember that there was a bike with this name from back in the mid noughties but make no mistake, this one is all new. This week's pro racing has mainly been centred around the remaining national championships, most of them uh, in Europe. Some riders have been pretty greedy side. Matthew van der Poel and Yolanda Neff are not content with winning <laughs> titles off-road, have added the road titles in their respective nations too. Can't condone that kind of behaviour, can No. Uh, anyway, for all of the details on those national championships, check out our GCN Racing News show. Yeah, please do. Uh, in other racing news, probably the biggest news of the week, in fact, was that Warren Barguil's team, Fortuneo Samsic, have changed bike sponsors just two weeks out from the Tour de France. They've parted companies with Look uh, and gone with someone else. They have. Step forward, 
Bash. Bash. Yes, B H uh, in English. Uh, it's the mechanics, though, that I feel sorry for here. I mean, it's a strange one anyway, but yeah. they now have to build up bikes for the Tour de France. There are eight riders. Each one's going to have a main bike, a spare bike, probably another spare bike, a time trial bike, and probably a spare time trial bike. At least five bikes each, eight riders. That's 40 bikes. Great maths, Dan, but it might even be worse than that because they'll probably have an aero bike and a lightweight bike, won't they? So we're True. looking at maybe 50, 60 bikes. Oh. Hope That's, they get paid overtime. Yeah, and I tell you what, if anyone's trying to buy a Shimano Durace group set in France at the moment, you'd be waiting a long, long time, wouldn't you? Uh, now, last week, we asked you whether or not you would take Caleb Ewan to the Tour de France as part of your team. You voted, and 56% of you said you would. So, uh, obviously, we'll forward those results over onto the Mitchell and Scott team, and it probably won't do any good. Yeah. But nevertheless, small consolation there for yes. Caleb. Yeah, we'll forward it to Caleb. He'll be pleased with that. Won't yeah, he will. Yeah, yeah. Well, maybe not 56%, but it's not overwhelming. <laughs> anyway. It's time for a new giveaway. Oh. This week, we have two pairs of Raptor Smart Glasses to give away, coming from every set. Yes, look at those. Can I try them on, Dan? Uh, right now, if you haven't seen Dan's video, a first look of the Raptor glasses from late last year, then let me fill you in, because effectively, they give you a heads-up display of all your essential ride data. They've also got a GPS function. They've got a built-in GPS in them, haven't they? Yep. And then if that's not enough, they can also take pictures and HD video with a built-in camera and built-in storage. And Conveniently for now as well, they're also acting as an auto cue as I speak. They're so, not. Yeah, yeah. So this is all completely scripted, Dan, mm. and uh, and actually it's just I'm just reading it off. From I the thought you knew a lot. I know it's I brilliant. You actually it? watched my video. Well, yeah, I have, and weird that I'm you know can predict like in the script what we've just talked about now. Yeah. As well. uh, you can also link them up with your smartphone, and after that you can read messages if you want. Uh, also, you can upload workouts to the Raptor sunglasses, uh, which means that you can see what interval you need to do next, whatever you or your coach prescribe, and also whether you're actually meeting the power demands as you go along. As I mentioned, we've got two pairs to give away to two lucky winners. Uh, so to get involved and put yourself in with a chance of winning, simply head to the link which is in the description below. Yeah, now, we've also got some results for you this week. We've got the results from the Continental Tour de France Limited Edition Grand Prix 4000 RS tyres. Five winners for you. I'm going to have to take these off because believe it or not, they're, they're not actually in auto queue. I was just fibbing there. Uh, so we're going to have to read off uh, the winners. First up, Graham Carruthers from Great Britain. Nicole Hogue from the US. Gareth Davies from Great Britain as well. Uh, oh, I didn't practice this before. Oh. It's a Swedish name. It is Anders Odmir. You know, if you put these on, they'll tell you how to pronounce it. <laughs> And finally, Joe Erie from Great Britain. Well done to all of you. Uh, if we haven't already, we will be in contact to let you know that you've won and get your Continental tyres straight out to you. Yeah, and remember as well, you've definitely got to uh, enter this competition because that's a seriously cool bit of tech, isn't it? Next up, hack forward slash bodge of the week. Uh, first up, uh, it's rather hot in a few places around the world at the moment, uh, as we are finding out in the set right yeah. now. Uh, to combat the heat inside his bidons, uh, Cornelius, uh, James Cornelius has wrapped tin foil around his bottles there uh, to stop them from getting too hot, presumably. Well, I'm gonna say, Dan, irrespective of whether it works or not, it feels like a bit of a bodge. Doesn't it, it? It very much looks like a bodge, and I would imagine that you will rip that foil off as soon as you try to remove your bottle from the cage. Yeah. Uh, there are thermal bottles out there that there you are indeed, do yeah. keep your uh, water or energy drink cool for a bit longer than a normal bottle. Yeah, okay. So first up, bodge. Sorry about that. All uh, right, next up we got this from Aaron Terrazas. Uh, I've been tinkering. This time I decided to paint my cage mount the same colour as my bike. Uh, does that count as a hack? Uh, it looks good. It does look good, but I don't know. I, I'm not sure it's a hack. It's just you know, it's kind of it's kind of cool. Yeah. What but. you need though is the new special edition Wahoo in red, the Element Bolt. That is a very good point, Dan. You definitely do. I think a hack's got to improve functionality, hasn't it? Really? Do you think? Well, you can't no, call a paint no, job got, a hack. No, we've had some we've had some uh, custom shoes that we've called hacks. They look great. Yeah, Confusing in there, Inconsistency I? in my judgment. There we go. I've been <laughs> yeah. called on that before. You, you think it's Aaron, do you, rather than Aaron? Anyway, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, Stewie 
in Northampton. Uh, daughter tore a ligament, so she's now on crutches. The handles needed a wrap, uh, so she used some spare bar tape. It's an oldie, but it's a goodie. Definitely yeah. a hack. Definitely a hack. I was actually on crutches myself briefly recently, and it does start to bruise your poor hands. You know, all that weight on the, on crutches. Uh, it's a good job that you can moan about your uh, health yeah. problems, isn't it? Uh, right then, next up we've got this one from Steve Wells. This is cool. I'm using my kid's old bed base as a family bike stand for the garage. Look at that. So simple, but so effective. Wheels need Neatly slotted in between the slats there. I think that is cool. You don't even, you just lean it against the wall. Genius. Hey presto. You what a hack. A bike rack for what, five, six bikes there? Brilliant. Yeah. Uh, next up, this is definitely a first. It comes it in is, yeah. from Ivan Valk. Valky, uh, possibly the greatest GCN hack ever, well, will be the judge of yourself, that. Yeah. Thank you very much, Ivan. Uh, after a conversation with Emma Weston about flappy ride numbers, she pulls out the double sided boob tape and it works magic. Well, there we go. I never ever thought of that before. Genius. And no. to be fair, it's Ivan not talking up his own hack there. It's clearly uh, Emma Weston 1980s hack. So, uh, congratulations, Emma. I'm not quite sure that's the best hack of all time. But it's definitely a good one, mm. isn't it? Oh. So there we go. Ending on a, a high here in Hack or Bodge this week. Uh, if you have anything, Hack or Bodge, that you would like to submit for public judgment, uh, then make sure you send it in to us using the hashtag GCN Hack on most forms of social media. Yeah. Caption competition. Your chance to win a GCN Camelback water bottle. Last week's photo was of Cy. Um, quite a funny one. He with a penny farthing there. <laughs> Brilliant. And a massive wedgie. Last week's show. Can we say we're wearing an aero speed suit there? Did you have so, a big wedgie? Well, in order for that jersey, that skinsy to fit properly, it has to be like five sizes too small. So when you try and stand up straight, and a bit of it, I don't stand up that straight generally, mm. it gives you a massive wedgie. Yeah, you so, better take that survey, mate. Oh, well, yeah, well, after that. Anyway. Yeah, right, well, we do have a winner, and that winner is. Zach Swan, whose caption was. Oh look, there's a penny. Barthing. We get that caption every time that there's a caption, sorry, a caption photo that involves some sort of crash. Uh, never give the winner to that one. No, but there uh, we go. That was good. It does fit there, doesn't it? Yeah, we like what you've done there, Zach. Uh, so yeah, congratulations, the bottle coming to you. How about this week's photo then, Dan? Who's that? That is Elio Viviani just after winning the Italian National Championships. Can uh, I have a go? Can I have a go? I'll go on then. Right. I'm sorry, Elia, but these shoes have got to go. There is no way they're going to match your new National Tamps kit. Well, if he does redo his shoes, uh, so will it be a hack or a bodge? Oh, good point. Which depends if uh, they get done properly or whether they're painted. No, it's a hack, isn't it? <laughs> Custom shoes is a hack. Oh, man. Right. Yes. Uh, get involved oh. in the comments below with your best captions and we'll pick a winner this time next week. And Zach, don't forget to get in touch on Facebook with a message with your address and we'll get this out to you ASAP. We've picked three more of our favourite comments from the last seven days. Uh, lots of brilliant ones, particularly under the Spanish launch. Oh, I've yeah. a lot of them, uh, the ones that I could read. <laughs> yeah. Uh, first up, underneath Cy's interview with David Miller about time trialling technique, Patrick Carroll wrote, Simon is remarkably smooth and steady on the bike. Uh, and Patrick, I think, did mean you and not David. Because there was quite a long thread of people agreeing with that. Really? Uh, yeah, I'm remarkable kind of waiting for the punchline. No, that's it. Oh, thanks, mate. Yeah. You picked that one out to read out. No, you did. You put it in early, didn't you? <coughs> I'm Thank joking. So. I did put it in. I'm uh, feeling in a good mood. Yeah, thanks, mate. Uh, anyway. Oh, yeah, David's on good form actually. He's blooming interesting bloke to talk to. Uh, right, Rennie, uh, feels weird seeing someone with upper body muscle wearing the GCN kit. Yeah. That is a good point. This was in mistakes not to make in a sportive. Uh, we have plenty of comments recently uh, along those lines, haven't yeah. we, since those new presenters have joined. The Love Island contestants. And finally this week, uh, Hacks. Uh, his hair game might be all our, uh, our all-time favourite Dan Lloyd's. Uh, hashtag feels bad for Dan Lloyd. Uh, this is under our launch video for GCN on Espanol. It's Oscar the one Puyol. we mentioned earlier on. It is, it, it yeah. is, it is. And like I said earlier, it's hard to argue with that, isn't it? Oscar's a pretty stylish little dude, isn't he? He looks sharp, doesn't he? Proper sharp. Yeah. Right then, let's tell you what's coming up on the channel over the next seven days. Let's do. Uh, to start with, on Wednesday, we've got how to sprint on a road bike. Uh, obviously, that's not from either of us anymore. We've got <laughs> yeah. Chris Opie with that. Um, 10 o'clock, I'm in that video. 
You're not. Oh, yeah, yeah, Learning, technically. presumably. Yeah. Yes. Uh, we've also got our big Tour de France preview that we day, do. which involves all of our kisses of death. We're giving our predictions for the winner this year. Uh, then on Thursday, we have got our top 10 riders to watch at the Tour de France. Sorry, I'm very forgetful today. I'm having to read it off the computer here. Friday is Ask Do you want every sight glasses? <laughs> yeah, Friday is Ask Do you That is a Tour de France special, so we encourage your questions all about the Tour de France for that one. So that will be coming up on Friday. Uh, we've also got highlights of the Giro Rosa, which is the most prestigious women's stage race, starting on Friday over on our Facebook watch page. That's right, and then on Saturday, well it's busy down Saturday isn't it, because of course it's the start of the Tour de France as well, which means you've got Giro Rosa to watch and you've got GCN's Tour de France highlights yes. package to watch with Mr Lloyd, that's over on Facebook watch as well. <laughs> And then, if that's not enough, uh, over right here on YouTube, uh, we've also got the start of a new series, Get Fit Quick, Get Fit in Four Weeks, over the course of the Tour de France. Chris Opie takes you through it, and he will boost your performance. Mm. There we go, how about that? Uh, then on Sunday, we've got uh, Talk versus Cadence, so that will be an interesting one. Uh, and then on Monday, of course, it is the GCN Racing News Show, to supplement all your racing watching as well. <laughs> And then Tuesday, it's the GCN show. Oh, and not only that, we're also out in Eurobike as well. So uh, make sure you stay tuned to GCN and GCN Tech because Ollie and I will be bringing you tech videos as of Sunday. And John Cannings is on the ground at the Tour de France. It's busy, busy in July, isn't it? Yeah. It's Talk versus Cadence with Emma. Uh, I'm not sure why. I just wonder whether it's worth watching or not. <laughs> as in, you mean where there's actual science involved yeah. this time? Yeah, okay, fair enough. Right, that is unfortunately it from the GCN show for this week. Uh, but as we've just said in what's coming up on the channel, don't worry because there is plenty of bike watching to be done uh, on GCN over the next few weeks. Uh, and before you do leave this video though, please make sure you head over to the GCN shop because we've got some super cool limited edition merchandise for you for the month of July. T-shirts. Yeah. Loads of cool t-shirt designs. Uh, so yeah, make sure you check it out. Lots to look at over there. Not just t-shirts, also hoodies and sweatshirts. Oh, if it was the weather to wear hoodies and sweatshirts now, Dan. Are you getting sped up of the hot weather? Over? I'm not, but sometimes it's nice to put a sweatshirt on, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. wrapping the air conditioning up, mate. Yeah, I think that must be a genetic thing to prepare us for the British winter, that after a while we get bored of summer. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It is so hot here. Size had four t-shirt changes just in this half an hour of a GCN show. Quite remarkable, really. Yeah. Uh, right then, more content for you to watch right now. Uh, can aero bikes climb? So I answered that question in the video, but it's just down here. Yeah, and of course, if you need no further reminding, please also head over to Facebook Watch to make sure you check out all of our racing highlights as well. And a big thumbs up, why not? <laughs>